In this video, I want to take a minute to walk through the Factory IO software that we have available in the lab. The Factory IO software is a way to emulate real world automation type devices and allow you to interface that with your actual real programmable logic controller, such as the Micro H20. So, to do this, we're going to simply start by opening Factory IO on the lab computer. When you do that, you'll come to this screen. So for these first couple labs, we're going to use the standard scenes or pre-built scenes that come uh, with Factory.io by default. So we're going to choose scenes. And there are uh, several pre-built scenes that have been uh, created for us, but we're going to use the very, very first one, which is from A to B. It's a very simple conveyor belt with a box. So we're going to click on that from A to B, and that'll open this up. Now, once you're in Factory IO in the scene, we can navigate and kind of uh, zoom and, and tilt around and see like top view and stuff. I would kind of recommend um, not changing too much, but if you, do, um, if you do move the scene around, the best thing to do to kind of get it back to a view that you like is to go to view and then do camera navigation. And this will pull up uh, a much easier to uh, follow uh, menu, some buttons to, uh, to navigate the screen. But before we can begin the lab, we have to configure the driver for Factor IO. Basically, we have to tell Factor IO, what are you going to connect to? And in this case, we're going to connect to the Micro H20 PLC. So we're going to go to the file and we're going to choose drivers. So by default, there is no driver assigned. If we choose this pull down menu, you'll see there, there are numerous uh, automation devices or controllers that we connect to, uh, such as Advantech, several different uh, Allen Braille options, uh, Modbus, OPC, and Siemens. So the nice thing about Factor IO software is all the controllers that we have available to us in our, in our classroom We'll be able to um, interface with uh, such as the Siemens S7 1200 or the Allen Braille control logics or our Allen Braille Micro 800. So I'm going to choose Micro 800. When I do that, we get a uh, device shows up now in the middle. So before we talk about what this is, the next step we need to do is we need to, we need to configure the, the IP address uh, that we will be of the controller. So we're going to go to configuration over here in the upper right. When we go to configuration, there'll be a, a box to type in the IP address of your micro H20 controller and our host. So that'll be, of course, 10.10.1.11, .10 since that's what's pre-programmed in your controllers. The other thing you could do here, if you want to choose, if you want to, is you can change the default prefix of the IO points. So Factor IO is going to look for tags in the Micro H20 controller that start with these prefixes to interface with. So we will have to create a tag in the Micro H20 controller that starts with B O O L or bool underscore I N underscore and then the number, such as uh, zero or one or two, depending on how many. And the offset basically is where you're going to start with. So we're going to start with zero. And then the count is how many. So we're going to create two tags um, starting at zero. So basically zero and one for Boolean inputs and then Boolean outputs. And in this lab, we don't have any floats or integers. Floats meaning a real number, basically an, like an analog value with a decimal point precision. And an integer would be an, like an analog value, but with no decimal points behind it. I'm going to leave these default just to kind of show you how this works. You are free to change this if you want, um, but uh, leaving by default is perfectly fine. Uh, you could choose to auto connect. I'm going to keep it un unchecked. Um, auto connect would basically, uh, Factor IO would try to automatically connect to the Micro H20 controller whenever it opens up the project. We will hit the back arrow to go back to the previous screen. So what we see now is a 
a box kind of representing the kind of, shall we say, the inputs into the PLC and the outputs from the PLC. Um, Factor.io calls them sensors and actuators. So sensors are things that we're sensing, therefore they're inputs. Actuators are things that we're going to turn on, such as, in this case, the conveyor belt itself. So by default, it puts these, um, the sensor to uh, bool underscore in underscore zero. So this tag in the controller will be linked to the sensor that is in this simulated environment. And bool underscore out underscore zero is then linked to the conveyor. So if I wanted to turn on the conveyor belt in the program, I'm going to turn on this tag in the actual micro 820 PLC. Now, if for some reason, if this was not here, I would basically could take it and drag it to the spot. So there could be some additional, in some scenes, there could be some additional um, points here that aren't assigned. I could simply take the, uh, the tag over here and drag it and assign it to an open spot. But in this case, there are no additional open spots because back here in configuration, we said that there was only going to be one Boolean output tag and only two Boolean input tags. And that's what I have, two inputs and one output. So once this is configured, um, if I am in the lab and if I uh, do have my micro H20 PLC turned on, I could press the connect button and that will make factor IO connect to that micro H20 controller. It'll use this IP address, and we have to make sure that our computer in the lab is on the same domain as the IP address of the PLC. When I'm ready to actually run the lab, I'm going to hit the back arrow one more time, and that brings me back to the scene. So if we look at this a little closer now, we see that uh, we have a conveyor, and kind of hiding underneath the conveyor is a motor. And if I were to kind of tilt this down, you'll see I have a motor down here. That's an actuator. So I'm going to turn this motor on. And when I turn the motor on, this belt will actually start to turn and this box will actually move. And then off on the end of the conveyor is a sensor, basically a photo eye sensor. So when the box comes and it triggers the sensor, the, the uh, sensor status bit will change its status. It's a discrete sensor, so it's either on or off. And when the box triggers, the, or breaks the light beam and triggers a sensor, it'll change its state. So at this point, that's all we got to do. Um, when we're ready to, <clears throat> we're ready to run this program, we would choose the run button here to switch between the edit and the run mode. Now, the only thing you have to do in the micro H20 controller is when you go to your, when you create your project, you would, um, you go to your global variables. And if you scroll to the bottom, we need to create tags that basically use the same format or the same uh, name as what's used in factory IO. So I'm going to create a tag that's actually called bool underscore in underscore zero. Now I can give it an alias, which would basically uh, would give us a, um, you know, a better representation of what this is. But my actual tag has to match what is here in the driver configuration. Bool in zero, bool underscore in underscore one, bool underscore out underscore zero. It has to match. So I've created three tags, in zero, in one, and out zero, and I've created the aliases for them. Now, also for this lab, we'll use a, uh, a push button to start and a push button to stop because we need to tell the belt. When do we want to tell the conveyor to start? We're going to use a push button to, uh, to tell it to start. So I'm going to create a couple of other tags that we'll use in our logic as well. But these three tags here must uh, are very important. If these don't exist, when you go to run the project, uh, it's not going to work.